Hi, great people. You are welcome back to Secrets Fashion House channel. My name is Paula. Today we will be learning how to make a, a crop top with a bishop collar. Um, it's going to be interesting. I will be making the palazzo part of it later, but today we'll be concentrating on the uh, crop uh, top parts. So let's get started. So before we start, uh, I have here with me this uh, beautiful mint green uh, dochet uh, fabric, light dochet. So I'll be making use of like uh, three yards for both a uh, crop top and the palazzo trouser. So let's go. Now I've gone ahead to uh, cut out my fabric and uh, uh, fold it. The dochet silk I'm using is uh, by 60 length. So I cut out 19.5 inches. I don't know if you have seen everything. I cut out 19.5 inches. So when I fold it, I'm having like a 30.5 or so, depending on how uh, long your the length of your fabric is. So, but this length is so good for the style we are we are making. Uh, the style is going to be crop top shirt with uh, cut together sleeve. So for the cut together sleeves, the shoulder length we'll be needing is like 13, in, 13 inches, 13 to 15 inches. So I'm good with 13 inches in this uh, project, depending on how long you want your sleeve to be. This, which I fold into two, that give us like uh, 30 inches or thereabout on fold, is, will be used for both uh, front and back uh, cut but first of all let's take care of the front cut so for the front cut i've gone ahead to mark uh, three inches for the button and the uh, overlap uh, uh, region in the center front i measure three inches then i rule it down with straight ruler and uh, here i mark half an inch half an inch i rule it this half an inch will serve as a joining allowance for the shoulder. So, the 19.5 inches that we cut out, 18 inches is our, our original length, the original length of our, our crop top. One inch will be used to fold it for the hem parts, for the down parts, and the half an inch will be used to join the shoulder uh, length region. So, I've gone ahead to to mark this uh, half an inch up here, which is my, which will serve as my starting point. And three inches have been folded in. So the next thing I'll be doing is to get my shoulder length, which is 13 inches. And my 13 inches will be starting from this, uh, this three inches line. So I get my 13 inches. So this is it. Then half an inch as my, uh, sleeve uh, hem allowance. Hem allowance of, for the sleeve is half an inch. I join it to so it, making 13.5 that I mark here. So the next thing I will be doing is to determine the my ammo ammo length. So my the ammo length I will be working with. Let me use a. You can use 9 to 11 inches. I'll be using 11 inches. I want that uh, ammo region to be free. We are going to use 10 anyway. Let me use 10.5. Then, my shoulder slope of uh, 1.5. You can use 2 inches. I'm using 1.5. So let me let me first of all connect my 13 my 13.5 this uh uh Deutsche uh, seek can be somehow funny it won't stay where it is kept so that's why i use paint to hold it down here i believe you are seeing this chalk clearly because i decided to use uh, to draft on the fabric direct this project is the line 
So this is the hemming allowance for the shoulder. For our top length, one inch as a hemming allowance. I connect it one inch. Then I get my neckline. The neckline I will be working with is 2.5 by 3 inches. I connect it. Two point five by three inches. So that three inches, I mark it here as well. I connect with straight ruler. So I get my shoulder slope of uh, one point five. The shoulder shoulder slope of one point five will be connected to the neckline with just this way <laughs> don't mind this uh, fabric that's why we normally draw on the pattern and transfer it to to the fabric but we don't want it to look as if you cannot uh, draw on the fabric direct but it depends on the fabric if it is Ankara fabric now it will have been easier to draw on it directly so connect your joining allowance This is our hammer region. So the next thing we want to do now is to measure the bust. The bust measurement we are working with is 34. We divide it by 4, give us 8.5. Then you add like uh, 2 inches to it, making uh, 10.5. So you mark it here on the bust line region, 10.5. You repeat the same on the waist line region. Then you connect. You can use your freehand sketch to connect just this way to this end. Just like this. This is the joining allowance I'm drawing. So I'm going to cut it out. So ensure that you arrange it very well before you cut it out, especially for this uh, fabric we are dealing with. So this is the front cut of our crop top. So let me just go ahead and fold the back cut to draft it out. This is the uh, button allowance and the uh, overlap region. So all you need to do with this region is to is to fold it. You just mark a one inch, fold it in, high on very well then fold it in again and high on very well this way this is the way it's going to be we we'll do the second part the same way so then one we lap on the other one so that is for the front cut let's quickly move to the uh, back cut now for the back cut this is it the remaining parts of that my fabric uh, go ahead to fold it this is the center back this center back is not going to open you know it's shut so all you need to do is just to mark 2.5 inches as a, the wideness of the back neckline 
2.5 then you step down with one inch as the depth then you connect it you connect it just this way to save time or for it to be on equal uh, side you can just place uh, one of your front cuts to it because you want to cut it out now so for the side for this side to be equal so you just place it this way because this cuff region has to be equal i cut Then you cut the neckline region for the back. This is it. So all you need to do is to place it on itself to, you know, to join the shoulder region together. This way, it's the half an inch joining allowance. You do the same thing to this side. Then don't forget. You can put a light uh, paper stick on this uh, button and uh, overlap um, allowance. Just place a light interfacing on it. So I fold it one inch, just, just the way I explained. One inch you hire, then you fold it again. Another one inch. So that is what I will go and do now. Then I overlock everywhere I need to overlock. Now this is it. I've gone ahead to iron this uh, button and the uh, overlap allowance. I've gone ahead to iron it. You can see. I first of all pasted the light interfacing. I did the same thing here. Then this is the way it's going to, to be. Now here we have, have gone ahead to, to join my top from uh, i mean by the shoulder length region i've joined it with half an inch and this is the button and the overlap allowance i've stitched it down you can see and the uh, after joining the uh, shoulder length i fold in i hem the the sleeve with half an inch i iron very well thereafter i join it by the side you can see after joining it by the side i notch it in this region before I overlock it, I notch it so that it will relax in the armpit uh, uh, region. And then for the M part, the down part of the top, I fold, I overlock it and fold it in with half an inch. Everything is in place now. So the next thing is to go ahead and join our piece of collar before we do the button hole and fix the the button. And to make the this up color, I actually have video on that, but I just want to use this uh, the opportunity of this uh, project to teach you another fast uh, method of making your uh, this up color. So, and what I will be using is the uh, 90 fl uh, degree flame method. That is what I will be using to make our, our this up color for this very project. And uh, this is the um, color interfacing i supposed to um they call it a color stay some people call it a color stay anyway color stay this is the this is it but i don't have much of it but this which i have can still make the color but to draw it out it might not be enough to draw it out so i will just use this paper to demonstrate how to you know draw it out so and before we do that, the first thing we will do is just to measure what we are having in the uh, neckline region, the neckline circumference. You place it on fold, place it on fold this way, then measure it out. We are having like a 9.5. If you open it, it will give us like 19. So that is what you will do. You are going to fold this. In 90, 90 degree flame method, fold it this way. 
then find a place where you can get uh, that 9.5 that you have in your uh, neckline circum circumference so just place your tape this way and see where you can get 9.5 i get it here I just mark it and see what do we have here um let me just say uh, use 12 inches 12 inches you mark 12 inches here as well 12 inches so mark that 12 inches round so let's just measure it again to see if we have our yes we are able to have our 9.5 so the, now you determine the height you want for your collar it might be one one inch 1.5 or two inches max so i'll be making use of uh, one inch for my collar so uh, on this line i step up with one inch so this is what i will be cutting out now then i will now use it to cut out my um collar stay Here we have it. Yes. So I will use this to cut out my uh, collar stay now before we now place it, iron it on our fabric. I've gone ahead to use this paper to trace out, uh, to trace out my uh, collar stay. This is my collar stay. If you have uh, enough collar stay, it's advisable you mark the red on your collar stay. And this is it. So I will take this now. I will go ahead and uh, place it on my fabric. Then add half an inch. I will add half an inch at the down, half an inch up here, um, half an inch. I will have an. I will add half an inch round on my fabric. After placing this on your fabric, you cut it out, adding half an inch all round. Then you cut out another fabric of that size when half an inch has been added all around. So that one, there will be no need to add the color stay. So you might just have, you can add that light stay on that one. Yeah, I've gone ahead to paste my uh, color stay on the, on the color that is cut out in the 90 degree flay form. So this is the, the lining. The same fabric is used to cut out the lining. So I uh, paste the, I mean, I gum the um, light interfacing to the line. So you can see. So the next thing I will do now is to go and join the, I will join the, this upper part. You can see the smaller part of it. I will join it together. That is the upper region of the collar. I will join it together with the half an inch. Then I use my iron to fold in this half at the down part i will fold it in with my iron so but for the for the lining when i'm folding in the lining with the iron i will not fold in up to half an inch i will fold in like one centimeter so that the lining will be longer a bit than the main uh, collar that by the time we are joining it together you can give it one time uh, so this is it i've gone ahead to iron this my half an inch in trim out like a quarter of an inch to you know iron down this so that's why it's uh is able to to lay down perfectly like this this is it this is what i trim out to iron it down so and uh, you will notice that this is half half an inch why this is like a uh, one centimeter when you place it on itself the lining is uh, longer than the main collar now so and i stitch my half an inch here so, which i will you know
Yeah, so the next thing is to grab my, my crop top. This is the main color, this very one. I will now place it, I will insert this like a half of an inch will be inserted in and I will begin to stitch on this uh, edge. I will stitch on it, go around. So as I'm stitching on this, it will be holding this as well. It will be holding the lining as well because the lining is longer. So as you are stitching, he on this, it will be holding the two because the line is longer than the main collar. So it will be holding it together instead of you to first of all uh, stitch this way, then begin to instead of you to run your stitch twice. So it's better this way, it will make your work neater. So that is what I will just go ahead and do now. You are good to hold it down with a pin. If you are not perfect enough to to run it this way, so you can hold it down with your with your office pin. So let me go and do that and come and show you the end results. Yeah, I've gone ahead to join the bishop collar to the bodies. You can see how beautiful and neat it looks. This is the inner part, the liney part. I just insert this and uh, start stitching it that way. It's very neat and this uh, method is very um, simple. Um, the outcome is very uh, neat and beautiful. You can see this region. You can see how um, everything looks. By the time it gets to your body it will lay to your neck so it's, it's not that one that will be standing <laughs> that kind of bishop collar that will be standing at this region no this is the way it's supposed to to lay so the next thing is just for me to go and uh, put the button holes then i tack my button and the our crop top We'll be ready. I'm sure you have really enjoyed this video because this is where we are going to stop. Like this video, share with your friends and family, and drop your comments on the comment section. And I want you to join me in the making of the uh, Palazzo trouser part of this uh, project that will be dropping next. So, thanks so much for watching this. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.